In this session, we're going to review mechanical ventilation. And to teach these points, I borrowed an excellent slide set from a friend of mine, Pashak Kora at the University of Washington. With her permission, I've modified her slides to add a few videos that I hope will make mechanical ventilation less mysterious to you. So let's get started. The objectives of this talk are to review the modes of mechanical ventilation, how to set up each modes, to review some important physiology, and to be able to troubleshoot the ventilator. These last sections will be particularly helpful with your acute care homework. But let's start with the modes. I'd be lying if I didn't say there's an alphabet soup of mechanical ventilation modes that are available. But the three that we'll be talking about that I think it's most important for you to understand are volume assist control, pressure assist control, and pressure support ventilation. There are many others that you may hear other people talking about. There are many others that you may hear people talking about, such as airway pressure release ventilation or pressure regulated volume control. You'll understand these modes much better once you understand the basic physiology behind volume assist control, pressure assist control, and pressure support ventilation. There's a general rule which we'll keep referring back to, and that is if you set the volume like you do for volume assist control, then you need to monitor the pressure. And if there's a problem with the patient, because the volume is set, that won't change. So you need to understand how the pressure has changed. Similarly, if you set the pressure like you do with pressure assist control, then you want to monitor the patient's volumes. Let's talk first about volume assist control. So when you set up the ventilator, what do you set? Well, you set a tidal volume. This is, after all, volume assist control. And we target a tidal volume of 6 to 8 mLs per kilogram. You set a respiratory rate, and together those will assure a minimum minute ventilation. The inspiratory flow rate and pattern are also set, but in almost every institution, the respiratory therapists are the ones who set that. What will you monitor? Well, like we already said, if this is volume and you've set the volume, you want to monitor the pressures. In particular, we'll be measuring the peak inspiratory pressure and the plateau pressure. Some of the advantages to using volume assist control include the fact that you have the ability to set a minimum minute ventilation, so it gives you some control over minute ventilation, and it allows you to measure respiratory mechanics that may be very helpful when we talk about how to troubleshoot the ventilator. For most students, it's easiest to learn volume assist control first and then to apply it to pressure assist control. At Duke, we're a little bit backwards and we use all pressure assist control ventilation. Here at Duke, I'd recommend that you still learn volume assist control first and then apply these principles to pressure assist control. Okay, let's take a moment to look at this ventilator and pay some attention to the ventilator waveform. We're going to use this graphic to demonstrate the difference between an assisted breath and a controlled breath. So you can see in the bottom left hand corner in the dial that the set rate is 12. But just above it, you can see that the patient is breathing 20 times per minute. The only way to tell the difference in volume assist control between an assisted breath and a controlled breath is to look at the pressure waveform, which is noted here in the top line of the ventilator display. Here you can see a slight negative deflection in the waveform with yellow line. This represents an assisted breath, where the patient has essentially sucked the pressure down to the point that they've reached a trigger, and then the ventilator has initiated a breath. The rest of the breath is completely identical. The patient gets the set tidal volume, and the rest of the flow of the ventilator remains the same. In contrast, you can see the breath that's noted in red over by the number eight in the top line. Here there is no negative deflection. The ventilator has given a controlled breath. The patient did not initiate a breath, but it gave a tidal volume of roughly 600 mLs, and the flow is the same. Let's take a minute, minute, let's take a minute to review pressure assist control. Going back to our original premise, in this mode you set the pressure. And you do this by setting an inspiratory pressure and an inspiratory time. So you apply a pressure for, say, one second, and given the compliance of the lungs, you'll get a tidal volume. So what do you monitor? You monitor the tidal volume and the minute ventilation. 
What are the advantages to pressure assist control? Well, like volume assist control, you can mandate a given minute ventilation. It's a, it can provide full support. Also, because you're limiting the maximum pressure, you can reduce barotrauma. And because you can increase the eye time, you can improve oxygenation. And some people think for these reasons, pressure assist control is more comfortable for patients. This is all true unless the patient is very hungry or air hungry, like you might see with an asthmatic. In those cases, the patients generally prefer very high flows, which are seen in volume assist control. Let's take a moment to review what the waveforms look like for pressure assist control. This again is a waveform from a transport ventilator. In this case, we've set a rate and the patient is breathing a bit higher than that. But instead of setting a tidal volume, we have now set an inspiratory pressure. That's the 20 that's down here in the second dial. And we're giving 20 centimeters of water pressure for one second. And during that one second, the patient will get a tidal volume. And in this patient, that tidal volume is about 800 mLs. So what about pressure support? How is it different than pressure assist control or volume assist control? Well, just like pressure assist control, you set a pressure, the inspiratory pressure. In this mode, sometimes people call it the pressure support pressure but you don't set an eye time. This is the main distinction between pressure assist control and pressure support. In pressure support, the patient effort will determine how long the breath is. You also don't set a respiratory rate. The patient must take spontaneous breaths for every breath. You monitor the tidal volume, you monitor the respiratory rate, and you monitor the minute ventilation. The advantages to pressure support is that the patient has a lot more control over the breath. They determine when each breath starts and they determine when each breath ends. And because the patient must contribute more to ventilation, it's considered a mode that can be used to assess for readiness for extubation. It's sometimes considered, sometimes considered a weaning mode. The most important thing to remember is that the patient must have an intact respiratory drive. Let's take a moment to look at these waveforms. So here you can see on the bottom that quite a bit less is set. So here we're setting only the pressure support and the PEEP and the FiO2. And the patient is getting a spontaneous breath every time. We are seeing this negative deflection and also this ventilator is telling us it's a spontaneous breath because it's yellow. The patient is also helping to determine flow based on how hard they're pulling against the ventilator, and the patient gets an associated tidal volume. Let's take a moment to review the difference between pressure assist control and pressure support in the next slide. Here on the left, we have pressure assist. In this mode, you set an inspiratory pressure, and that pressure is delivered for as long as the eye time is set. Pressure support is different in this case, what terminates the breath is a drop in flow. So if the patient doesn't pull as hard against the ventilator, the flow will drop quicker and the breath will be shorter. In this way, although you're setting the percent drop in flow that will stop the breath, the patient interaction with the ventilator will determine when that breath stops. Now that we've reviewed the modes, let's talk some more about the settings that you would set if a respiratory therapist looked at you and asked you to give them ventilator settings. So for volume assist control, you will need to set the tidal volume, the respiratory rate, the FiO2, and the PEEP, or the positive end expiratory pressure. Tidal volume and respiratory rate will determine how much minute ventilation the patient has, and FiO2 and PEEP will de determine oxygenation. Whenever you think about a patient, you should decide, does the patient have an oxygenation problem or a ventilation problem? And you should change the ventilator settings to fix the problem that the patient has.